Hey everyone. So we're here inside of Bridge and I'd like to show you some cool techniques for renaming bunches of files. Now there are many, many options available to us here inside of Bridge when renaming files. I'm just going to be stepping you through five good examples uh, to give you a good overview of what can be achieved with these techniques. So first things first, if we go up to Tools, Batch Rename, you'll notice it's grayed out because we need to select at least one file. As soon as I do that, you can see it's available to you. Now I wish to rename three files, so I'm just going to hold down the shift key, click on my third file there, I now have three images selected just here. So let's dive in, Tools, Batch Rename. Now we will look at presets a little bit later. I first want to point out this section here called Destination Folder. Now I'm going to run with the default, which is Rename in Same Folder. So these three files that I have selected out here, we are simply going to be renaming those. Wanted to point out though, you can choose to move to other folder or copy to other folder. So if you choose one of these two options, just choose the browse option there and designate that other folder. So I'm just gonna set that back to rename in same folder. Okay, now again, you'll notice the preset was set to default and good God, look at this for a default. So. You'll notice that each of these entries has a minus and a plus sign at the end of the line. If I simply press on those minus signs, I can start to reduce those entries down to this first single entry here. So new file names, we just have a single entry here. So let's dive into our first example here, guys. Now, in my first scenario just here, I'm thinking maybe I've run a, a batch process on a bunch of images and I've reduced them all in size so that their longest edge is 1,000 pixels. So I wish to append the term uh, 1,000 pixels to each file name. So let's do that. So here where it says new file names, it's currently reading as text, but these are all the cool things I can change this to. So text, new extension, current file name, lots of options in here. We'll explore a good bunch of them. But for this first one, I want to go with current file name. And you can see we have the option to call name plus extension, name, etc. I'll just keep this as name. So current file name, set to name. We could change the case if we want. I'll just keep that to original case. So notice also down here, you always want to be keeping an eye on this preview just down here. This shows you for the first file that you have selected, the current file name, and then whatever we do up here, what that new file name will look like. So currently it's just reading as the same. So let's come up here and at the end of the line, let's hit that plus sign and I wish to add some text. So in this case, I want to add minus, or rather dash, 1000 pixels. So you can see our file name now has dash 1000 pixels appended to it. And what's even greater again in terms of previewing our file names is there's actually a preview button just up here. So if I click on that, it will give me a nice preview for all of the files that I actually have selected out here. So you can see all of these have dash 1000 px um, appended to all of the names. So that's looking great. Just quickly scanning that and that all looks great. So I'll choose OK. And then at this point, I can just choose rename. And there we go. There's our new file names with the nice appended 1000 pixels at the end of each file name just there. Very nice. OK, let's choose another three. Tools, batch rename. So this time I'm thinking I would like to totally rename the files and also include a sequence number inside of there. So I've just done a lovely photo shoot for Bob Smith. So let's go and include, so let's go and include Bob Smith in those file names. So down here, I'm going to remove text. Current file name, I will change that to text. And I want the text to read Bob Smith. Now, if you wonder why I'm using dashes instead of spaces, you're totally free guys to be doing something like this. That's totally fine. I tend to use uh, no spaces in, in any of my file names just because I'm tending to upload things to the internet. And we all know that links with spaces in their file names generally don't look the prettiest. So I'm just going to keep this as Bob-Smith and then let's append a number to that. So hit my plus sign, change this to sequence number, starting at the number one, three digits. This is looking great. So you can see our preview just down here. Now I intentionally left off one little thing so you can see. So we've got Bob dash Smith, but then the numbers start directly after that. So I would like a dash in there. So I'm going to put in Bob dash Smith dash. That looks great just down there. Again, we hit the preview for a quick look and check it out. So we had all these crazy numbers over here. We've now got Bob Smith one, Bob Smith two, Bob Smith three. That looks great. Choose okay. 
rename, and there's those files there, looking great. Very nice. Let's move on to a, another example. So choosing three random files, tools, battery name. Let's do something very similar to what I did before. Let's change the name to our good old George Glass. And instead of a sequence number, I would like this to be a sequence letter. And we can change the case. Let's go with uppercase just here. So previewing just down here, that looks great. Hit my preview button. George Glass A, B, C, looks great. Choose OK, rename, and there's my three files. Very nice. Let's choose another three. Battery name. Now in this example, I would like to show you how you can actually pull metadata from a file and actually use that to name your file. So what I'm going to be doing here is coming into this option here for metadata excuse me, metadata just there, and I want to go and choose the title. Now, you'll notice that the new file name currently reads as nothing because we are yet to add the title to the metadata. So I'll just cancel out of here. So what am I talking about when I'm talking about metadata? Well, there's a whole panel just over here for that, and I'll just select the single file just here. Now, this single file has a whole bunch of information attached to it behind the scenes. So under the file property section, you can see there's a file name, date created, date modified, resolutions, dimensions, lots of great stuff. Many, many sections. And this one here, IPTC core, there are many, many fields inside of here. The one we are specifically interested in is title. So let's go and add, say, Bert. I'll choose the next file down and give that a title of Ernie. And this one here can be, uh, Cookie Monster. Notice I am using spaces inside of here, guys. Just wanted to point that out so you'll see that in my file naming convention later. So there's Bert, there's Ernie, and there's Cookie Monster. Okay, so let's select those three. Tools, battery name. Okay, so we've got metadata, title. Check it out. There's a first one coming up there as Bert. Let's preview all three. Bert, Ernie, and Cookie Monster. Fantastic. So let's choose OK and rename, and there's my three files just here. Now, I've done this deliberately. Actually, there's nothing wrong here, but I wanted to show you, with these files still selected, we could go and rename these again. And the reason I'm thinking to do this is, I would like to put a word out the front of all of these file names so that they are all grouped together. You'll notice currently they're scattered all over the place because this starts with a B, this is C, and this an E. So with those still selected, let's go into Tools, Battery Name, Let's come down to here and we're going to go for text. In this case, let's add in the street. And so then in here, we need to add the current file name. So I'm thinking this looks okay. I'm just gonna do a quick preview just now. So they all now have the street dash out the front and there's Bert, Cookie Monster and Ernie. So that's looking great. Choose rename, fantastic. So this has now brought those three files together. Very cool. Okay, let's choose another three files here, guys. Let's look at string substitution in this example. So tools, battery name. Now in this example, what I'm thinking is, I'm looking at a, uh, an example file name just down here. It's got the ZIMG just out the front there. So I'm thinking what I would like to do is wherever I see that, I would like to replace it with the word Claire. So maybe these are all photos of a person called Claire. So let's come into here and choose string substitution. And we now have to tell it what to find and what to replace it with. So I'm going to tell it to go looking for ZIMG and replace that with Claire. So that's already looking good just down here. Let's hit our preview. Now this is great. Notice the first one, 3105, it still remains as 3105, but ZIMG, is now replaced with Claire. And the same is true for the other two files. That looks great. Let's choose rename. There they are just there. Fantastic, so that was string substitution there, guys. Let's grab another three files just here and pop up into tools, battery name. And let's just do a silly example here, like um, maybe let's go with um, some text and we'll just change that to be say, uh, Karen. And let's, uh, let's just do our good old add a sequence number afterwards. So let's put in Karen dash. So there we go. 
Karen Dash followed by three digits, preview, very nice. So that's exactly an example that we set up earlier just with a slightly different name, that's all. Now in this case, what I'm thinking is I would like to actually uh, preserve the file name. So yes, we've been replacing the file name, but what if it's maybe important further down, to, down the track to actually know what that original file name was? So the way we can do that is by actually activating this option just here, preserve current file name. So if I turn that on, and then if I just hit the preview, again, everything still looks fine. Nothing's unchanged, choose OK. If we choose now rename, there's our three files. Karen, one, two, three, very cool. But if I select on, just say the first one here, if I come up under file properties inside of our metadata panel, there it is just there. There's our new file name, but check it out. There is our preserved file name. So that is the original file name that we had coming in. So potentially very important guys, if you need to track original file names. Let's have a look at uh, saving presets. So I'm going to choose our last three files just here under tools, batch rename. And let's look at this preset option just up here. Because remember I pointed out we were using this default at the start. Now let's say I was very happy with this. Maybe let's for this example, just change this to say Jeff and we'll have that starting from the number one. So let's quickly preview this Jeff one, two, three, that looks great. Uh, but in this case, what I wanted to point out was how you can actually save a preset. So let's say this is something we like, we might be using it multiple times in the future. Let's actually save this as a preset. So let's hit save and let's just call it Jeff. I'll choose OK and I can rename those. So sure enough, they came in there like so. But if I now say choose those three Claire files, if I come up under tools, batch rename, and if we choose the preset Jeff, notice it's also automatically set the sequence number to four for us there, which is fantastic. So if I now choose rename, there we go. Those files that were called Claire are now Jeff four through six. Fantastic, that was the preset option just in there, guys. Um, I'll just jump in here one last time and show you under the batch rename section just here. If you go into preview, you can actually export out. So what you see up here, you can actually export that out as a CSV file if you needed to for your records. Okay, so that's it there guys, tools, batch rename inside of Bridge, um, a fantastic free tool that comes with the Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, many people don't even know that they have Bridge on their system. So I highly recommend you check it out and uh, a fantastic tool for renaming your files. Good luck everybody, I hope this helps you out. Catch you later.